we actually had to drive an hour from Wyoming just to visit this vendor. That's how remote they are. So um, when we walked into their shop, they had one of these systems running. And right away, I was fascinated by it. I was drawn to it. I had to know more about it. And then when we came back, we started researching it. Pat, I walk around this amazing shop here at Thor Labs and I see, if not everything, darn near everything in automation. Whether it's a form of pallet change of a multitasking machine, whether it's an implemented pallet change from like a Mitoco going onto a three axis machine. And to be fair, I'm looking at this automated cell from Trinity right now, and there are somewhat similar adaptations on other machines. So I have to know, which means the audience has to know, why Trinity? What made you lean in this direction? Because currently, and you might go with some more, this is the only one amongst a giant 100,000 foot machine shop yep, yep. in the building. So why? So, you know, traditionally we had mostly horizontal power pools that we're utilizing, but we've kind of made the switch over to five axis and, and like a lot of other manufacturers or, or job shops, we've fallen in love with five axis machines. This particular machine was purchased as a standalone and we've been able to develop a lot of part programs and fixturing through fifth axis products where we have quick change capability, but that doesn't bridge the gap for us during the night shift hours. Um, you know, resources are becoming more and more difficult every day to come by. Um, in some regard, machinists are a dying trade. So, you know, we've gone to technology to help us bridge that gap. I like that you've described it in such a way because it is the, the hard truth sometimes, isn't it? Um, and there are conversations out there, and, and we'll just touch on this real quick, is, is that automation is taking my job. I hear it in other parts of the world. I hear it from time to time, but it's just not the case. You've already said it. It, it might be, and I hope it's not, but it might be a dying trade. Yeah. Certainly, it's hard to find good work these days. Um, and a lot of times, people are referring to this now as my night shift or even my second shift, sure. right? Yep. So I'm looking around this shop, again, because I'm fascinated by everything you're doing here at Thor Labs, and your ceilings are actually quite high. Yeah. So something I've noticed, and I'll let you kind of go further with this, is this one seems to kind of go up, whereas some of your other ones go out. And we're all battling for real estate space. Was that some of your mindset as well? Absolutely. Um, our previous facility had very low ceiling heights. So we were kind of, you know, stuck with what we had. And, and so we went linear, but now we're going vertical to try to maximize the nice ceiling height that we have in this facility. And, um, you know, this is hopefully just one of many that we plan on automating over the next year or two. Yeah, here in the U.S., we sometimes think we can just keep buying land, maybe not in the cities, but we have a big country, right? And I've seen the integration vertically in a lot of other countries where space is limited, whether it be because of mountains in a place like Korea or just overall space adaptation where our camera guys and some of our film crew come from in England, right? We're all sure. going, going up. So that certainly makes sense to me. And I have to also ask when it comes to real estate space, because you're also constantly bringing in new machines over and over and over again, right? Yeah. So how did you learn about this cell? I think you have kind of a fun story about yeah, this, don't so you? This is definitely one of the first in our territory. Um, I was actually visiting a vendor of ours in Montana and the labor pool is very limited in that area. So um, we actually had to drive an hour from Wyoming just to visit this vendor. That's how remote they are. So. Um, when we walked into their shop, they had one of these systems running and right away I was fascinated by it. I was drawn to it. I had to know more about it. And then when we came back, we started researching it. And then I was at a trade show at Automate in Detroit. And um, I actually went to their booth, made the connection. And here we are, I don't know, six or nine months later and we have our own system. And just to add a bit of context for the audience, because I've had the great privilege to talk with Pat off camera, this area in Wyoming has around 300 people, I believe. In that area, yeah, And it's, it's around small, 12 small. employees, and that was the largest shop yeah. in that area with 12 employees. So, yes, it is very tough to find quality help, which, so that makes sense to me, and that's fun. Now, I have to ask as well, because 
again, and I go back, and this might be redundant, but I go back to looking around your shop, and I see cells everywhere, and this is the one of the kind currently, but probably more coming. So when you have the courage to try something new, sometimes it doesn't work out, and sometimes it does. How easy was this to adapt and learn its capabilities? This was probably one of the easiest installations we've ever had. Um, installation and training, four days, turnkey. And now we're a week later, we're starting to put some of our setups together. And essentially they supply everything from, you know, the integration to each platter of the cell, robots all pre-configured. It's really plug and play. You add a few, you know, door sensors and a pneumatic door and off you go. Four days, huh? Four days complete. Man, it doesn't seem like it should be that easy, but I'm happy to hear that it is. So the last question I have for you, my friend, is Trinity. Now. The Selway family are great friends of mine, and I've seen this system for a long time. So for the audience watching, Selway did a really great job of kind of keeping it all on the West Coast and, and working out some bugs and some kinks and making sure everything was good and ready to go. Who did you recently buy this from? Because we are actually on the East Coast, aren't we? Yeah. And I didn't know until recently that Trinity was all the way over here. That's right. So again, you know, we lean on our distributor. Allendale Machinery Systems. Um, you know, when I came back from the trade show, I immediately contacted Neil McGill and said, hey, you know anything about these? And said, yeah, we do business with them. But, you know, it's kind of new to our territory. So they jumped on that opportunity. They're as equally excited about it as I am. And uh, now it's just a matter of plugging all our setups into the machine and going back to work. I'm gonna ask you one last favor as we close this out and for the audience as well. So for those of you watching, this cell actually isn't, other than training and being able to work, hasn't currently been utilized just yet. So I'm gonna get Pat on camera to invite me back when it starts to run again. You think we can do that? I would love to have you back. Yes, we did a good yes. job today, Pat. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank and thank you for sharing this with the audience. This is Trinity on the East Coast. For those of you watching the channel, anywhere in the country at this point, Point. They are expanding and according to Pat, super easy to learn, vertically integrated and ready to go plug and play more or less. Pretty close, yes. I like it. Thank you all for watching. I hope you've appreciated this video just like we've appreciated creating it.